You know what? I just remembered something that Grandma used to say. Trust your heart. I don't know if that's going to help you, but I'm sure if you do it, you'll be okay. Give me another heart. <laughs> That's, that's really good advice, sweetheart. Thank you. I'll take it. As long as you promise me, you'll do the same. Okay. Bye. And that goes for you, too, Riva. Wherever you are. so soon? Hey. <clears throat> How'd you find me? Maya's everywhere. I was there with you, Tony. You think if you talk the talk, walk the walk, someday you'll be the big bad godfather. You watch the insults. I heard about your arrest. Yeah, you arrest in the world. <laughs> hey, you better not tell anybody. But what? What, you're gonna get one of your big bad goons to stuff me in a trunk and bury me down at the end of Wrigley Field? You tanked. You're in your own business. I am. So you better remember this in the morning. What fresh hell is this? I'm pulling out of the Harbor Project. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It's not safe anymore with this Richard as president. We've laundered a nice pile of cash, but now we're through. Mm hmm. Okay, the mom's out of San Cristobal. Yeah. Baby. Except for one loose end, one that needs to be tied up immediately. What's that? You. I'm the loose end? You heard me the first time. Oh, great! What, what are you, you think I'm gonna blow the whistle on your big laundering scheme to get immunity? Are you? No, I would never sell you out to save myself. It's not how I operate. Oh. I resent the accusation. Oh, don't, don't. Don't get all holier than thou on me. Everything you do is to save your own skin. That's, all your harbor projects. That's not true. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I do. You want me to lay it down for you? You bribed officials. You want my career pigeon when I needed to learn the I think I had a choice. Everywhere I turned, I had someone threatening me or forcing me to do things I did not want to do. Nobody forced you to do anything. You could have walked any time. Yeah, empty-handed. I let you pressure me into doing your dirty work. You knew exactly what you were getting into. I got in over my head. And whose fault is that? My own. Well, at least you admit it. And I don't regret it. Even with your face plastered on every tabloid in town? I had a dream. I thought if I could make it work, I could make my marriage work. It's too bad it didn't. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Because I love my husband. Oh. You know, I don't believe you for one second. See, you of all people should, Tony. Oh, why is that? Because you've made your own sacrifices for love. And what do you know about that? When you arranged for that guy to take the fall for Josh, you didn't do it for business. You did it to protect Mara because you love her. So the next time you think I'm lying, you remember that. Excuse me. your worst nightmare. You know, Josh, those 
SEC charges won't stick. My lawyer will have them dismissed in no time. Yes, sir, I would not count on that if I were you, Alan. The SEC boys, uh, I talked to them, and they, uh, they've been trying to nail you for a long time. They're not going to back off. You know, this is so unlike you, Josh. Usually when you're angry with me, you show up at my house and shout and scream. But to send the SEC over to my house to do your dirty work, now that is almost sophisticated. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Alan. You see, I figured I would go the business route this time because uh, I know it's the language you speak, but make no mistake, what's happened between us is very, very personal. You're referring to your wife responding to my attention, I assume. Well, if you are, you didn't have to go to all of this trouble to keep her from straying, Josh. All you have to do is satisfy her. See, I get it. I was not able to satisfy her, but you can. You set limits on her, Josh. Boundaries. You tried to mold her into someone that you wanted, mold her into a behavior that you wanted. But she's her own kind of woman. No man can own Olivia. She's priceless. Yeah, she's also deceitful, Alan. She manipulates. And bottom line is, she doesn't love you. Well, that's where you're wrong. No, she never will love you. Because it's not about love, what's between you. It's about power and money. And who's pulling the strings? Well, if that's the way you think, you're ill-informed. Because what we have, you'll never understand. I know you slept with her. More than once. You think that means there's something between the two of you. Let me tell you something, Olivia doesn't give a damn about you. You're a means to an end for her. Think about this, Alan. If she betrayed me, the husband that she claims she still loves, what makes you think she won't betray you? Now don't tell me, let me guess. The reason you don't think Olivia will betray you is because you are the great and powerful Alan Spaulding. No one crosses you, and you always get what you want. You said that, not I. <laughs> well, you keep on believing that, Alan, that, that fallacy. You just keep throwing money at her, whatever you want to do. In fact, why don't you throw that rock you have in your chest that you call a heart at her? Because when you do that and she dumps you, it's going to hurt you even more, and I'll be there to see it. I didn't come over here to listen to you say that. No. You came over here to twist the knife in a little bit, but what you're getting is a dose of reality, and you don't like that, do you? What I am hearing is you attempting to make yourself feel better at my expense, and I think it's pathetic. Oh. Well, hey, check back in with me in a couple of months, okay, Alan? When you're in jail and Olivia has dumped you, and we'll see you, it's pathetic! Well, I tell you, I've been concerned about Reva for a while, ever since she bought this painting. The likeness is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, my understanding is that she, she thought she was buying a landscape, but then she found this portrait underneath. Now, what I don't get is, once she saw the likeness, why didn't she just get rid of it? Oh, well, she tried to. She sent it back to the B&B &B where she bought it, but they returned it, address unknown, which is impossible because we had just been there. You were at the B&B &B with Reva? Mm-hmm. Just briefly. I stopped by there after a convention in Chicago. She had gone away for a few days to try and sort things out, remember? And I stopped by just to see if she was all right. But when I ran into her there, she was packing to leave. She had had enough of that place. Why? A lot of things very unsettling had happened to her there, first of all. She bought this, and then she... She said she heard her mother speak to her in the middle of the night. You mean, you mean like, uh, in a dream? Well, she claimed she was wide awake. Sounds crazy, you know. But... No, it, it actually sounds consistent. See, um, 
Reva claimed she had heard her mother's voice once before at, at our uh, wedding, at our second wedding, actually. Did, did she say what her mother was trying to tell her? Yeah, it was, it was a phrase. Um, trust your heart. Trust your heart. But then she admitted she read the same words in a book the night before. So this could all be power of suggestion. Hmm? Yeah, maybe. Or maybe not. <laughs>